welcome to the Guild of Dungeoneering. This is the Guild of Dungeoneering. 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 Chasing fame and glory. The Ivory League of Explorers, the noblest, most virtuous guild in the lands. Pfft, those insufferable jerks. I'll show them. They won't think me so grossly incompetent when I have my own guild. I bought a small hall in the bad part of town from the gold I borrowed from them. I've stayed out, staked out a dungeon that's ripe for the picking. I've even found a chump who can do all the dirty work while I sit back and watch the coins roll in. Like my father always told me, there's always someone stupider than yourself. Well, he never really said that to me. Actually, he said it to everyone but me. Hey, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> You're killing me. <laughs> <laughs> that okay. was just too far. Alright, I'm going to pause this real quick. Mm, never mind, screw it. I don't care if the sound is bad. Alright, let's do it. Barracks. Bam. Alright, what should we name our chump? The one that's all Bilbo. Yes. Bilbo. 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 <laughs> oh. Oops. Okay, so this is the, basically this is your buildings. It doesn't matter where you put them as long as you have them. Go exploring, hooray. <coughs> so now this is remember, the town in the middle right, here. Your first, your first dungeon has to take four thing ever. No, screw you. I'm going to speed run this bitch. You are going to lose. No, <laughs> screw you. Did you fart? He farted. <laughs> yeah. We defeat three monsters. All right. Oh, it does it for me, I forgot. I have no control over this. I'm fighting a rubber duck. It is level zero. It is irritable two, stupidity one. It is literally the only level zero monster in the game, and you will never encounter this creature again. Haha! -ha, take that! My eyes closed punched him. Uh Lucky. Ha ha! Alright, so this is a card-based dungeon crawler game where you create like t little tiles and things let's see plus one health yeah let's get the health health is good so um if you're not familiar with this game i'll try to explain it to you as quickly as i can in a way that doesn't sound entirely stupid um, shut up that. uh let's see here loner i would like you to go this way please thank you so you can use treasure to like lure them in, and it gives you extra gold, uh, which you can get at the, end, which will add up at the end to. Let's see, I've already. Uh, never mind. So the way turn, <coughs> the way turn combats work is that the, this way this turn based combat system works is that you essentially want to keep a health advantage over your opponent, which will, if you succeed, will always guarantee your victory. Now. Um, this is worth, that ability he just used was actually worth two healths, uh, worth, it's a difference of two health between his and mine, um, and I don't want him to get a two health lead, <clears throat> so I defended against it and it completely eliminated his ability to, uh, get that advantage. Basically always play it safe in this game whenever you have the option. So let's see. Should I get the paper crown? Well, there that only works for the first dungeon. Uh, you actually have time limits Two eventually. Two dungeons. First well, it depends two. on which which one you start with. So, all right. So these are rooms and things. You use them to connect to stuff. Uh, your dungeoneer has two move by default. If he moves into fog, he only has one move. And if he moves into, um, if he moves to pick something up, he also only has one move. So, we're gonna go over here. He'll automatically be drawn towards treasures. And it'll be, it's dependent on the last treasure you placed. So even if you place a three, a uh, massive gem somewhere, and then you placed a silver coin somewhere else, it'll automatically turn around and go towards the silver coin. Okay. The yellow um, shield with the X through it means that it can't be blocked by any kind of defense. 
this isn't a massive health difference, but I do want to avoid having to discard because that's kind of a pain in the butt. Now, I didn't use my um, holy seal here there because even though it's an all block, it blocks all types of damage, both physical and magical, that piercing will still pierce it. Um, Unblockables are unblockable, period. Yeah, completely. Um, so I want to save this until it really matters. Like, if he has another discard, it'll be a big pain in the butt. Um, <clears throat> using it against a one is not that good. All right, so. Do you have any decency, I wonder? Like the ivory <laughs> king of explorers. Instead, you pillage and plunder. Everything is under. Marauders. Okay, so you get points for exploring the map, you get points for killing monsters, you get points for loot that you've picked up, and for like other gold bonuses that you've run into, like the massive gems and silver coins I talked about earlier. Now, battle scars. Battle scars are random things you get at the end of every dungeon. Um, you can have up to two. Um, now this is a staged battle scar, and what this means is that in I get plus one health now, but in the future I'm probably going to get, I think it's stupidity one, which is a blank card added to my starting deck. Um, this second stage is not actually considered a battle scar in terms of you can only have two, so if you have two second stage um, battle scars you can actually have a total of like four effects added to your guy all right now we've done that let's see here so I'm thinking I'm gonna make this a I'm gonna do both parts of this so let's see here you can click expand guild at the bottom um, expand guild dungeoneers here's the list of your dungeoneers you can click on them it'll show you their battle scars it'll show you their stats it'll show you their combat cards now, here's the Expand Guild button. All this stuff costs 50. Um, the ones that look like this are stuff you start with at the beginning. Um, so you basically, it's like a blessing you start with um, when you start the dungeon. And for the example, this one gives you plus one loot choice slot after first two fights. Um, plus one physical damage for first two fights. Plus one health for first two fights, and plus one starting hand size for first two fights. This stuff will add loot options. So if I build this, then all these have a chance of spawning when I beat an enemy. Um, and that's true for all of these here. These are new dungeoneer types that I can get. So for example, this is the cat burglar, bonus treasure card at the end of every fight, and these are her cards that she starts with. Um, I'm going to go with the Bruiser because they're amazing for this next dungeon. Um, they have an effect where if they fully block an attack, they deal one damage, one unblockable damage. So I'm going to build this uh, because the next uh, not a gentle kind of dungeoneer, nor a poet, or a bruiser. But one that fills the heart, heart with fear. fear. I, I give, give to you, you the, the bruiser. bruiser. I play this game way too much. All right, what should we name our bruiser, Vince? Um. Ah, it doesn't show up. And my axe. There we go. <laughs> sure, why not? Let's go Lord of the Rings themed. And my axe. Gimli's too boring. I've got to go with that. Um. So, this is going to be our first boss fight. Now remember, farm this one, guys. Yeah, yeah. Because so, this is the last... Yeah, the second to last level you'll really be able to farm on. It's hard to get money later. Alright, so let's see here. Nasty rats are nature 2, feral 2. 
I'll explain the card system in a second. This is Spooky 3, Feral 2, and Loner. The Nasty Rat's gonna be easier to beat if he's not on a dead end. If you don't have a dead end card um, to put down in the dungeon. Alright, so. I can click on this. Uh, I should get an item first so I can show you what I'm talking about. Now, I can keep... I should have kept health advantage by blocking it, even though it was only one. Here we go. Here's a good opportunity. So I block this. Don't lose a card. And he takes one damage. So I now have... Uh, Explain why that is. Spiky. Because of Spiky. So I fully blocked that attack, which meant that I dealt one damage. And I didn't... Because I that attack wasn't successful, I didn't discard a card. So all around, that was a really good play. Now... I wanted to save this because even though it is, it could have been used there, I, I'd i rather waste a, if I have to waste a card, I'd rather waste one that does piercing damage rather than one that could potentially do two damage. So if he threw out a one damage that was did not have this shield, I could have done this and done two damage. Not that it matters because I win anyway. You heal all your health at the end of the battle. And every time you fight an enemy that's equal to or a uh, higher level than you, you level up. Let's see. Plus one hand, no. Stupidity. Let's see here. This could be nice, wooden stool. So here, let me t sh tell you how these work. So, if I click on this, you see I've got skills. Crush 1, Stupidity 1, and Armor 1. Here's how this works. Eventually you'll get Crush 2 and 3, or something like that. Now, Crush 1 gives you this card. Crush 2 gives you another card that's slightly better or applicable in different situations. And Crush 3 will give you an even better card. Um, and all of those will be shuffled into your deck accordingly. Um, now, this one, it adds up. So if I have Crush 1 on one hit, uh, item and crush one on another item, I technically have crush two. So I actually have uh, two different cards that I got gained from that. Alright, let's fight a null. Nulls are obnoxious as crap, so actually I'm not gonna fight it. I'd really rather not fight any of these. I want like one more loot first since I can farm. Here's a giant bat. You want, mate? Mm, so I'm gonna lose health advantage here immediately, which is obnoxious, but there's nothing I can do about it. I might as well save my shields for an attack that actually I can actually block. Oh, come on. That's obnoxious. I shouldn't have done that. I just gave I just gave up a two health advantage because I'm stupid. See now he's got four health and I've got three, and there's a distinct possibility I'm going to die as a result of that one dumb move that I made. Here we go. So I can defend his one, deal one, and hopefully he doesn't have any cards that I can actually block. Which is super obnoxious. I'm gonna save gonna this. Win. Yeah, I know. All right, so I died, but I'll get it. Gives you an option to see what it's like to have a dead character. Across the land, uh, look at the bones. Yeah. So the I unlocked the cemetery, the which basically shows you all of your dead guys. You you tend to lose a lot of people in this game. I want a code red. Give me one second, guys. Mmm. 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 Greg, stop having sex. Oh. Uh. Get back to your dead person. You guys like my donut? Mmm. It's crispy creams. 
just in one part of this nutritious breakfast. Uh, Not sponsored by Krispy Kremes. Like, midnight. Mmm. A midnight breakfast is the best breakfast. There's no, there's nothing that pisses people on YouTube off more than eating on the microphone. Oh, Mountain Dew Code Red with a rush of cherry flavor that no other soda can provide. Mmm. You know, the funny Refreshing. thing is that <laughs> the bottle, the two liters of the Code Red actually have a different taste than they used to, but the Code Reds, the, the, the cans still taste the same. A dungeon's life can sometimes be hard. Not always going as they might have planned. They mostly end up in this graveyard. So yeah. So here's how this works. Um, when you're when one of your uh, guys dies, it'll take one dungeon's worth of fighting for uh, to get that class back again. Um, the exception to this is the chump. You'll always have a chump. So if your chump dies, you'll immediately have another one. Um, but chumps suck. So I can click on him and he says stuff. What if I were to poke you instead? Well, I would like it. <laughs> Please stop clicking me. <laughs> Alright, so we've got 22. We didn't get much gold from that because we didn't finish it. But we're going to send Bilbo into the dungeon regardless. You don't tell me what to do. I'll do a dungeon with you. <laughs> so note to self, don't fight uh, bats with... Oh, we've got our dead end. Awesome. So this is going to leave us even with uh, health difference. So he did one damage, healed one. That's two difference. Then I did two, so that's even. Now, I started out with more health, so as long as we stay even, I'll win. That's the idea. Let's see, what do I want? Swift one. So this is... Uh, a swift effect is one that uh, you attack before your opponent, which is an automatic victory if they have one health and you have one health. So normally, the enemy attacks first. If you both have one health, then you die. But if you have swift, then you win. So it can make or break a run, and that being said, I might as well just take it. Although it's not really my favorite stat. And honestly, I should probably consider, um... Uh, replacing it with a better item at some point, because I don't really like Swift. It's kind of obnoxious to deal with. All right, so here I can counter my his discard with a uh, draw. If I discard, then that means my starting hand has been reduced by two, which is a giant pain in the ass. So instead, I'm going to use that to immediately put myself back where I need to be. No reason to not give myself health advantage. It's surprising how much more commentary I can make on a game I actually know how to play. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. And despite my knowledge, this game I couldn't give any kind of commentary. <laughs> um. So this is a bit. I this item always weirds me out. Plus one starting hand size in battle, but you also get stupidity one, which is a blank card. Since we have swift already, I don't think that's too bad. Um, because you can make up for the stupidity card by having an, ex an extra card in your hand. So honestly, I would only recommend taking the newspaper hat if you already are guaranteed to have, um, uh, a, a draw card of some kind, regardless of what the source is. 
Uh, the Apprentice starts with a bunch of draw cards, for example. I'll explain the boss fights in a second. See, immediately we get with this stupidity card, so I'm gonna give myself the advantage and um, don't ever take chances in this game, is basically what I'm saying. Uh, let's block this so we don't lose health advantage. We've got a huge health advantage right now, but you don't want to snowball. It can become a problem. If you screw up even one time, it's a good chance that you'll lose. Not against guys like these, but I mean, you saw it happen with the Bruiser, so. It can happen, in fact. Uh, let's see. Fire one, sure, why not? The other one was a barrel. It's like armor one, stupidity one, or something like that. I'm not really fond of it. <sighs> oh, yeah, I said I was going to explain the boss. Sorry. Remind me next at the end of this fight, Vince. Alright, so here's to hoping that I get my uh card discarded instead. Um, unlike other unlike other skills, if you get stupidity past stupidity one, it doesn't do anything other than just the blank card. You just have a bunch of blank cards. Um, that's the one exception to the rule. Stupidity two is two stupidity ones. Yeah, exactly. Not for a total of three, for a total of two. Let's see here, what do we got? Weapons, crush one, or splayed one. Let's take blade one, why not? Now we look like a proper adventurer. Okay, so. Let's take a look at our boss. So if I hover over him, I can see all of his stats and things. He has 8 health, Feral 3, which is, um, i trying to remember what Feral is. Armed 3, which is a bunch of attack power and stuff like that. Irritable 3, which does a lot of damage, but he also takes damage in return. Wait, uh, Greg, isn't Feral uh, a lot of piercing? Yeah, well, I know Feral 1 is a piercing damage. I don't remember what Feral's 2 and 3 are, um, but yeah. Uh, and here's his special ability, Leader, plus one health for each surrounding minion. That includes this tile, so I have to clear this tile out if I want to give myself a significant advantage in this fight. And I should always do everything in my power to give myself an advantage. Alright, after we fight this one, we're going to move on to level 2 enemies so we can level up and get some po higher level gear. <clears throat> when you have the option of farm, there's no reason not to. Farm all the lower levels so you can get fully kitted out low level, low level gear. Then upgrade to level 2 so you have a much higher probability of being able to beat the level 2. Then kit yourself out in all level 2 gear, then move up to level 3 and so forth. Uh, in this particular dungeon, you can only move up to level 2 um, because there are no level 3 monsters to fight except for the boss. Normally bosses are level 4, not level 3. Uh, but this is the tutorial dungeon, so... Yeah. Another thing to consider is your deck size. So, the more cards you have in your deck, the less likely you are to draw a specific card. So, you should be finding a good balance in between those two things. Uh, between having a bunch of really good cards and having no cards, basically. I'm going to save my Fire Blast in case he's got a uh, physical armor defense or anything like that. For now, I have no reason to... Uh, I don't think he's got any. Yeah, he doesn't, so let's just fire blast him to death. That's magic damage. It's basically just a different type of damage. It can't be blocked by red shields, but can be blocked by blue shields. That's all there really is to say on the matter. Um... Uh, oh yeah, this gives you health and stupidity. I'm just gonna take some gold. That adds a massive gem to your hand, or I guess a gold coin. I thought it added a massive gem by default, but I guess I was wrong. Um, let's not fight a null. All physical attacks deal plus one damage if on half health or less. So I'm just gonna skip the fight this turn and hope that I draw a rat man instead next time. Um, and I did, in fact, draw a rat man, so let's do this. Alright. 
And this is may or may not be a human. <laughs> yes, this is may or may not be a human. So this is one of the irritable stuff, headbutt, plus, uh, two damage, minus one heart. That's very typical of irritable. So I just gave myself a net of one damage in my favor from that exchange. And now I'm going to give myself uh, two. Yeah, I know what reason not to. <clears throat> well, I'm... I'm comparing the difference between the amount of damage he did to me and the amount of damage I did to him. Uh, not the amount that he's losing himself. No. Well, I did consider that, but he did one damage to me, so it canceled out. Um, let's see here. So I could go for a swift build. I guess that might be cool. So this... So here's what... Here's the deal. So right here, you can see um, the like slot that it takes up in your inventory. So there's weapon, offhand, head, and body. You can only have one of each, obviously, and there's no inventory. So once you've replaced one with another, it's gone forever. Um, now this is level 2 loot. Everything I've got right now is level 1 loot. So everything here is an objective upgrade to what I'm using. But this in particular is really good because not only do I keep my blade that I have from the fork, but I also get Swift 2 with Swift 1, which swacks, stacks with the Swift 1 I already had. So this is an objective upgrade in every way. Um, and honestly, I'm not really, like I said, I'm not particularly fond of the Swift, um, the Swift cards on this particular character. Usually you want to go for something a bit more well-rounded. Honestly, a combination of Crush, Armor, and Blade cards are really good against the Rat King, and I really would have liked to have the Bruiser so I could have defended against all of his physical damage. <coughs> but, uh, you get what you can take, right? So... Um, I've got another Rat, so I'm gonna go ahead and fight him instead. I will go up here eventually, but you can just farm this dungeon forever because there's no time limit. Here we go. I've got a really good starting hand. That was net zero exchange. This is net one in my favor. So yeah, compared the amount of healing each people does, each person does, and then compare the amount of damage each of them do, and then find the difference between all of those things, and whichever... Uh, one comes out in your favor, you're the victor, essentially. Just having a single exchange where they come out in favor is, can be incredibly unfavorable. Um, so here's, here's where Swift is useful, just for an example. Like, let's say I had a couple less health, I'd be dead, but because I've got Swift, I attack first, and he doesn't even do the damage to me. That can save your run. Uh, let's hold on to this. Oh man, my... I think my, um... Resolution is a little bit off. It's kind of annoying. Give me one second to change it. Sorry about the thing that's gonna change in a second. There we go. Sorry about that. Okay. So, what are we gonna take? We could get Fire 2. Or we could get Blade 2 and Swift 3. Let's go with that one, shall we? That looks pretty good. <clears throat> Alright, gotta say I'm starting to dig this combo. Okay, we're gonna work on killing this Ratman off. No reason not to fight a uh, Ratman on the way. Um, I would rather not have to discard a card, so I'm actually going to use my all defense for this. Alright, so, this is the only option I can do that will leave me with, uh, us, with this interaction breaking even. Uh, because one damage would be mitigated from lucky hit, he does two damage, I do one damage, minus one in my, uh, against me. But this way, we're both doing two damage to each other. So even though I am technically wasting the Swift, 
I'm not too unhappy about that. Now, anything here would be a net positive in my favor, so I'm just going to go the lucky hit to get that extra advantage. And... Yeah, I'm just going to cower because he's going to kill himself. Didn't matter what I did there, I would have won. Alright, let's see here. I am actually really enjoying the Ys that I'm getting from this hat, so I'm just going to take some gold. Du -du -du -dum -dum -dum. That just uh, ensures that one of your uh, cards is a gold card. Yeah, yeah. Nice. Yeah, I told them about that. Alright, so there's no reason for me to use this um, when I could use it on something better, like to pierce. There's a possibility that he'll throw up a regular shield and that'll be a massive pain in the butt, so. Like for example here, I could just block that, I don't discard a card. Here I can do two damage, he can do one in my favor. He is a level one monster, so this isn't much of a challenge anyway, but it's whatever, right? Uh, we haven't seen the uh, Blade 3 yet that I got. Do I still have it? No, I have Blade 2. What happened? What did I get rid of? Nothing. I think I've just not drawn it yet. Alright, so... There we go. Doo -doo -doo. Just take some gold. Ah, here it is. So dice. Blade 2, 2 damage. Get a 1 extra damage versus um, an, an incoming piercing damage. Now unfortunately... Wait, why did I start with one less... card in my hand? I think I just encountered a glitch, Vince. Oh, no, I didn't. No, I totally did. The crap? So I had an invisible card. I'll show you back in when they were recording. I had four card slots, but they were shifted over, and there was one that hadn't shown up, and it was an invisible card. So I clicked on it, and it was two damage. <laughs> I had no idea what it was. Um, now, no matter what happens here, I'm going to come at it in net loss, so best to keep the advantage in my favor as much as I can. See, if I had saved, if I had, uh, if he hadn't discarded my dice, which is what actually happened there, I'm not stupid, um, he, I would have done one extra damage against him with that bite. Alright, I'm gonna win, despite that weird glitch that we just saw. Okay, ooh, cooking pot, always really nice. Crush one, fire one. You can go for a crush build. I don't know if I want to switch it halfway through, though. Let's just see how this works. If it doesn't work, then that's fine. I mean, I learned something, and... I mean, this isn't my favorite build on this dungeon anyway, but I'd rather not be playing a chump in the first place, so... I, I mean the class, not, like... I'd rather not be a chump, which is also true, but that was not what I meant in this context. Vincent, can you explain it to these idiots for me? Explain what? Exactly. Alright, cool. Glad we got that sorted. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, let's see here. These, sh these blue shields are too good not to save. And drawing a card is always good, so if I'm going to have to waste a swiftness, I might as well do it on a draw card instead of on an uh, unused. Um, this is fine. There we go. There we go. So now we can show off our blade. So I get that one extra damage. That was not the most efficient way to do that, but it's fine. I would have won regardless. Wait, why would I? Just... <sighs> That's terrible. Never you get. St try never to get stupidity. 
it's just so bad. <laughs> it can screw up your run so much. Um, why did I decide to go all the way down here? Whatever. I don't want to fight a Knoll because I'm not a bruiser. Um, I would love to show you what the Knoll does because it's a massive pain in the ass, but I'm not going to like waste the last 20 minutes to tr like show you guys what an enemy looks like when I could easily do that in another dungeon. No offense to y'all. It's just how I roll. Okay. So, if all goes well, I should be killing him. Will be. Alright, so I believe if I do this... I know, he's not attracted to it, so... What if I put that there? Yes, okay. That is how that works. I'd rather not lose a card, so I'm gonna waste my cower. Um, not waste, burn. Net one in my favor. And that's also net one in my favor. That worked out nicely. We are going to finish him off with this. So he'll block one of the damage, but it won't matter. <clears throat> Health advantages only really matter for the first few, like, until you both are low on health, in which case it's you can just finish them off and with, with what with whatever makes sense. Sorry, I can't talk. Now the question is, am I gonna be able to put down I am gonna be able to put down. Looks like he's still gonna go that way, so. I will put this here. He will get plus one health, but I'm gonna have to kill him regardless to get to him, so he'll lose that advantage. And there's no reason not to get more gold. You can get a lot more gold for, um... You can actually farm this dungeon. Vincent, uh, who's in the background listening to this, was... He left a second ago to go to the bathroom, but... Um, he farmed this f this dungeon for about three hours, and by the end of it, he had accumulated 600 gold from monster kills, which meant that he could buy a crapload of um, buildings when he got back to the guild, which is a legitimate strategy, if incredibly boring and kind of tedious, so I'm not going to make you guys watch that, but it's a legitimate one if you wanted to try it yourself. See, the chump is objectively worse than the bruiser, but all it takes is one unfortuitous choice and just failure to pay attention to what is going on to cause your um, character to die. I believe you get plus one for each one that's there. So yeah, let's go. Sorry this is taking so long, guys. I was not expecting this episode to be this long, but it's what happens when you're not paying attention, right? It's what we've learned time and time again. No reason not to get one extra damage in. Well, I still can. Don't know when a bite's going to come up next, so... 1 to 1. 0 net. And we are going to block this. I'd rather not lose my swift if at all possible. So now I can do one of these. And a swift, yeah. There we go. You'll notice you see a lot of the same stuff coming up. That's because I've decided I'm not going to get it. And because we don't have that many options of things to... Um, pick up because we don't have any buildings that increase the amount of loot that we can get. <clears throat> um, let's see here. I happen to know for a fact that he does have a piercing, so let's do this. Oof. Okay, this is a tricky one.
Now, I could risk... Let's see. Let's do a little bit of math here. I have two options, really. I can... It's gonna be a net loss of one damage regardless. So I will lose one health, and... I will lose two health and do one damage if I use dice. Or I will lose one health and do no damage if I use cower. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use cower under the, um, yeah, under the, uh, hope that he's gonna throw out a piercing, but it doesn't matter because we have fleet-footed, um, and because he's doing one damage to himself regardless, so this is fun. Uh, the other one would have worked just as well, but no reason to, uh, anyway. Now, I'm not entirely sure if putting loot down in the boss chamber will be picked up at the end of the boss fight, but we'll find out, won't we? Alright, so we are even on health, and we will still be even on health at the end of this. Actually, I have one more health than he does, because of the choices I made throughout. Now, it's tempting to save this for something that's more important. Don't. Be merciless when it comes to bosses. They've got a lot of really strong and powerful hits. If you have the option to do extra damage to them, do it. And as a result, we have one. We don't know what other cards he might have had, so... I mean, we technically do. You could look it up on the wiki. Alright, we unlocked a bunch of stuff this time. Alright, so Fountain Addict, Addict is his battle scar. Attracted to Fountain's first tile card each turn has a fountain. And this is early stage. I don't know what the second stage is, and I probably never will because I'm probably never going to use this guy again. So, uh, on next episode we will take a look at what we've unlocked and uh, we we'll might explore another dungeon. So thank you guys for watching and I will see you next time. Bye!